Welcome to the unit circle. This looks incredibly confusing at first. This is a completed set of notes that we had from class. And we're going to basically deconstruct this by constructing it from the bottom up. Uh, what we need to do is go back and provide some background knowledge before you understand what's going on here. There's actually some other videos of people explaining what this is, how it works, um, that I'm going to link to in the end. But first, what we need to go back to is a geometry concept. All right, so in geometry class, we learned something about trigonometry, uh, which was SOHCAHTOA, was the S-O-H-C-A-H-T-O-A, and that was the way that we remembered that the sine of an angle is, the, is equal to the ratio of the opposite side over the hypotenuse. Remember, the hypotenuse is always opposite the 90 degree angle, right? So what we, these are just some notes from my, from my geometry class, and what we did is we just kind of highlighted. We were talking about sine of an angle, so it depends, the angle that we're talking about matters. So if I'm taking sine of this angle 55 degrees, that is going to be equal to this opposite side. I'm highlighting the opposite side just so we can, we all understand what we mean when we say opposite side. Opposite side of the angle we're talking about. So if I was talking about a different angle, it would be a different opposite side. The hypotenuse is always going to stay the same, though. So the same thing here, we have the cosine of an angle. Here's the adjacent side. And notice I'm still highlighting the one that looks similar to that one, but now we're talking about this angle. That's why this is adjacent. And then the tangent was the opposite over the adjacent. So that should all be a review. Um, so Katoa, right? Um, we need to, th this actually connects to the unit circle and, and we get some interesting results because uh, of this, these ratios here. The other thing that I don't think people realized early on in geometry, because I didn't mention it, was that there's not just sine, cosine, and tangent. There are some other trigonometric functions. There's some more that we're going to learn in pre-calculus. And, and the first one that I'm going to go to, let's see if I can adjust the camera here, is what, what 1 over sine of theta equals. 1 over sine of theta equals, and you should have this down, the, it's something called the cosecant. So CSC of theta. So 1 over sine of theta is the same as saying the cosecant of theta. Cosecant, all right? So that's the first one you need to know. And then the, what's, well, what's 1 over cosine of theta? 1 over cosine of theta actually equals the secant of theta which to me is a little counterintuitive in the sense that uh, cosine, you have the co in there and then the cosecant over here. These aren't related. So one over sine is cosecant, one over cosine is secant. So don't get, tw don't think, don't get that twisted now. Um, one over tangent of theta is cotangent of theta. That's all that that means. So there's these three more, cotangent, secant, and cosecant that we're going to refer to and that's also going to tie all in as we go through this trigonometry unit. So there's a little bit more background information. We've got Sokotoa, right? And then we've got, we had all those triangles. There's some special right triangles that I'm not sure that you, you're you familiar with, but there's triangles that have 45 degree angle, 45 degree angle, and a 90 degree. You'll hear it referred to as 45, 45, 90 triangles. They're special right triangles. So in this type of triangle, here's an example. Let's say we've got two 45 degree angles. There's the 90 degree. And let's say these two sides are x. Well, that means that hypotenuse is equal to that side x times the square root of 2. Now, why does that matter? You might see that written like this instead, as x is this side, and these would both be x over root 2. But what happens is we don't like the denominators to have a square root. So we do something called rationalizing the denominator, which is another hidden skill within this unit. And what you do is you take that x over root 2 and you multiply times root 2 over root 2, which is equivalent to 1. And when you do that, you get this. Now this ends up showing up in the unit circle, and we're going to see that later. So there's just a pattern that is revealed. This number is really important. There's another special rate triangle that will that'll show up. Its pattern will show up inside the unit circle, and that is the 30, 60, 90 triangles. All right, so here's an example of what that looks like. Again, here's the hypotenuse opposite the 90 degree. So then you have a 30 degree angle and a 60 degree. And since we already talked about opposite sides of angles in Sokotoa, we can do that again. So it's opposite the 60 degree will be, this side would be equal to h times the square root of 3 over 2. And opposite the 30 degree will just be 1 half of the hypotenuse. 
All right, so they're all derived from the Pythagorean theorem. We're not going to derive those. And we connect these to special right triangles to reveal several patterns. There's all kinds of little patterns. There's ways to remember the unit circle. But those numbers, the square root of 3 over 2, 1 half, and root 2 over 2, all show up in the unit circle. And those are the, they're just going to repeat over and over and over again. And that's where, they're, that's where they're coming from. So we'll see why between this combination and Sokotoa in a second. All right, so now we're back to this, the unit circle as it's completed, right? This is a completed version of that. And I just want to point out that square root of 3 over 2 we saw, the 1 half we saw, the square root of 2 over 2, we, all, we saw those three inside the special right triangles, right? And those all show up because we've got those 30 degree, 45 degree, 60 degree, 90 degree angles within here. So you might not see this. You might look at this and say, oh, it's a circle. There's a bunch of radiuses, radii, I should say. And wh where's it all coming from? Well, here's a really, I tried to trace over this, didn't do the best job, but here's that unit circle again. So here's our x axis, here's our y axis. The radius of the circle is 1. So from here to here is 1, 1 unit. Right, so this would be the point one zero, and so what we're interested in is all these coordinates on the outside of the unit circle. As if I draw a thirty degree angle, right here's the initial side, here's the terminal side, here's a thirty degree angle. Where's that triangle that we were talking about? Well, here, if I drop this perpendicular, which is this this piece right here, you don't see when you have the unit circle normally. So what we've got is a triangle with this hypotenuse is length 1 because it's a unit circle. So this is actually a radius of the unit circle. It's a length 1. So we've got a little triangle with a hypotenuse of 1. And if we went back to our special ray triangles, we would see that opposite the 30 degree angle is this side right here, this distance right there, is 1 half of the hypotenuse. 1 half times 1, which equals 1 half. Now, that vertical distance right there, that is the y-coordinate. So that's why the y-coordinate is 1 half right there. This is also the same as sine of 30 degrees. So sine of 30 degrees is opposite over hypotenuse, right? Sine of 30 equals the opposite side over the hypotenuse. Now, opposite side is 1 half. The hypotenuse is 1. So really, we make another extension there, and we say we can talk about all the coordinates on there, the x's and y's, all the x's and all the y's, and this is real important, that all the x's are going to be the cosine of theta, and all the y's are going to be the sine of theta. And so I can explain the cosine like this. That's this distance right here. So the x-coordinate is this distance from the origin over, right? How much do I go to the right? Well, this is the... This is cosine of 30 degrees equals the adjacent. This is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. So that is equal to the square root of 3 over 2. And how do I know that? Well, that's from the special right triangles. So from Sokotoa and the special right triangles, we get all these values. And as you go around the unit circle, you get the rest of them. This, one's end up, this one ends up being the square root of 2 over 2 and the square root of 2 over 2. And you can l link back to the, this is a, why is that true? This is a 45 degree angle there, right here. And this is a 45, if I drop the perpendicular, that's when that one is. And then this last one up here, this is a 60 degree angle there. From here, there's the initial side, terminal side. That angle would be 30. So it would be the exact, op it would be the switch of this. So this would be 1 half square root of 3 over 2. And then this, if I come all the way up 90 degrees, or pi over 2, that's going to be 0, 1. So the rest of these just get copied over into the other quadrants. This is the first quadrant, second, third, and fourth. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pause. I'm going to put a link to a better video, honestly, quite frankly, uh, for how this is deconstructed. So some of the content will be repeated, but I like the way that it, uh, this, this woman explains it a lot better than the way I do. Hopefully that just gives you a little bit of background as to how this was constructed.